Welcome to 100 Days of Python, the Python Code Along Challenge. I'm Bill Mosley, and if you want to find the entire listing of 100 Days of Python, you can find it at my website, www.bmosley.com hdp. Let's get started. All right, so welcome to day 59, and we are picking up where we left off from day 58. So I'm going to copy the end code for day 58 over to a new file so that I can have a record of what we did on 58. And uh, just to review really quickly, we have been working with an employee object. And we started out, the last time we worked with this employee database application, we used this as the data structure. I've just kept it for reference for now. <clears throat> Eventually we'll be able to just get rid of it all together. But this is our employee database application. And so this, is uh, this is what we used before, and now we are uh, moving to an object for each employee. We're going to keep those objects in a list, and so we can keep them organized and all of that stuff. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is instead of just a, a regular list, I'm going to use a dictionary object, and I'm still going to use the employee. ID number as the key for each employee. So I'll show you how that's going to work in just a minute here. But um, <clears throat> that is what we are working toward. So I last time created this employee class. It's got um, properties for first name, last name, age, email, and salary. And then we also talked about the concept of getters and setters. So I've got all of these getters for each of the properties, and I've got setters for age and salary that will allow me to update those two things because those are the, the really the two fields that I, I expect to be updated here. And so that is where we currently are. So the first thing I want to do is work on adding an employee and so I'm going to go right down here to the add employee function that I created. And a lot of these parts are still um, useful, right? We've got first name, last name, age, email, and salary. That's all good. Um, so what I need to do is um, I need to take a look at the ID number here. And that looks like it is useful, uh, the get ID. So this is what generates the next ID number. <clears throat> and of course, if I use a dictionary structure where I have a key and a value, I can still use get ID to do what I'm going to do. So this is all very useful. This here is not useful because I'm no longer going to use nested dictionaries, so I don't need that. Okay, uh, the str ID uh, being derived from the get ID that's still useful, and then instead of this, when I add uh, the employee, I am going to um, actually return a a um, dictionary that contains objects or instances of that object. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to create a new employee instance in that, in that area. So right here, oops. So we're going to say right here is, it's going to say employee and then I'm going to give it the data that was collected in these in the right order here. And the nice thing is we've kind of kept the same order, so it should be pretty easy to keep track of where we're at. One of the benefits of being organized. Okay, so there I've now created <clears throat> a new instance of employee with these attributes or these properties, and then I've assigned it using the new employee ID to the dictionary object, and then I've returned it. So if I, down here, 
and adding an employee, right? Then I want to use this function here. Now, the the D starter here is really used when we're just creating the data for the first time. So I'm just going to comment that out. And actually, I changed my mind. I'm not going to comment that out. I am going to just empty it for now and because we don't need that additional data anymore but then if we see this if we go down to where we're actually starting this you can see the starter is the default data set and then we create DEMP using that uh, we're adding employee here um, each time we add an employee you can see we're saving the data. So we're already kind of doing the things that we need to. I am going to change the name of this to include OOP. And the reason for that is because I don't want it to get confused with the other one that was there before. But this should all still work just fine now. And I've substituted um, the employee class now into that file. Uh, let's go ahead and actually, before we run this, um, I want to change the list employees. And I'm going to do something a little different here. So I'm printing the ID and I'm printing it without the line return at the end. And then I'm going to actually, let's just add that. I'm going to say EMP data and we're going to say key. And that should print that object string. Let's give it a shot and see how that works. So let's start out. Let's add an employee. First name, Bill Smith, 54, why not? Bill S at email.com. Salary is something. Okay, so we added the employee. Let's see it, if it works. Let's list the employees. Uh-oh. I can't con concatenate an object to a string. So my first suspicion was right here. This is where I'm having the problem. And I'm going to just move this down to its own print. So I'm just going to print. And I'm going to say... EMP data, and we're going to go key inside of there. Let's run this really quickly one more time. Now, it should have loaded the employees, so let's just go straight to list. And you can see there's Bill Smith. Didn't stay on the same line there, so we want to make sure that we're doing this correctly here. Um, I think I have to label that and so I need to actually label that attribute with end because otherwise it'll just print it as an empty space. So we'll run it one more time. Nice thing about saving your data is that we still have our employee in there. Okay, so we're getting a little closer. Now I just want to say, oh, just 
and let's try it one more time. This is where we just sort of iterate with the programming. Okay, so there's there it is, Bill Smith, and not so bad. Okay, so let's add one more employee. Um, John Doe, 23. John D at email.com. Okay, so let's list the employees. Looks like everything is working the way it should. Great. So now, um, what we want to do is we want to work on some of these other factors. And we also want to build in the ability to give an individual raise or change somebody's age. So we'll be adding options to our menu in a subsequent videos. But that's a good start for today. And we've implemented now the object-based model. And you can see now when we use when we update the age of the salary, we are going to be using these setters, which protects us from accidentally setting those values to something that's going to break the program. So having the, the object own its own data that's huge um, in terms of benefit and making sure that your, your program is secure and clean. So uh, we'll see you next time where we'll pick up where we left off on this project. Thank you so much for watching this video and coding along with me. Once again, if you want to access the entire listing of 100 Days of Python, you can do it at my website, www.bmosley.com slash HDP. You can also access my book, Introduction to Python Programming for Absolute Beginners at my website, www.bmosley.com book. Thanks again, and we'll see you around.